I'll just share a little introduction about myself. Um, they actually call me Paul. Paul Joseph Shepherdson. And I'm from Middlesbrough, which is in the northeast of England. I'm 54 years of age. And uh, I come, um, I have five sisters and a brother. I'm happily married for the past 12 years to a beautiful wife, only one wife. And um, I'm not greedy. Um, and um, she's from Kenya. We were married in Kenya 12 years ago. We have three beautiful children, Hannah, Samuel, and Joshua. And uh, I just want to share a little bit with you about my life. But I want to release a word here tonight. I, I thank you for Helen because... You know, I'm not ready to bring a sermon here tonight. I'm ready to bring a word what I believe God has given me for you tonight. And he confirmed it just with what Sabrina was talking about. See, when she was eight, 17, 18, she said that her mum and dad, you know, that they went through a divorce. You see, sometimes in life, there's things happen to us that will shake our lives, shake our situations. I want to share with you tonight, I feel what God spoke to me. He said, what can be shaken will be shaken in this hour. What can be shaken will be shaken in this hour. So I feel like God's going to shake you tonight. Amen. Someone might be like Shaky Stevens. <laughs> yeah. So... I want to share with you that when I was 18 years of age, by the time I was 18, I was addicted to amphetamine speed. I was addicted to, you know, to cannabis. I was, I'd also had my first prison sentence. I first went to court when I was 11 years of age. But when I was 18 years of age, and I, I think a lot of people saw on the fly that I used to be a football hooligan. Very good football hooligan. <laughs> You know, and um, obviously my team was Middlesbrough. But when I was 18 years of age, Middlesbrough played QPR away. And we used to hire coaches and we used to travel to, you know, to different, you know, towns all the way matches. We'd get in there, you know, in that town early. We'd go in their pubs and we'd, we'd look for the, you know, the way fans and we'd fight. But on the morning when I woke up, uh, my mum, you know, she had, um, she used to have a small job. And um, when she woke up, she used to put, wash the clothes, because we didn't have a washing machine. She used to wash the clothes by hand and put them on the line. And when she went out, she slipped and she broke her ankle in three places. But when I came down, because I was up early also to go and get the coach, all my father was, was actually concerned about, because it was a Saturday, and he used, he used to like going to the pub, and he would gamble. So I started to argue with my father, and I started to fight with him. And anyway, they took my mum to hospital, my mum said to me, you don't worry, you just go to the match. So I went to the match, but when I came back, I went to the hospital and, and my mum said to me, you know, you know, your dad's been up this hospital and he said to me, if you don't get out of the house, he'll kill you. You know, so you see, that shook me. That shook me. The certain things in life that come to ch shake you. You know that? And um, let me just read a verse. It says in Hebrews chapter 12, verse 26 and 27, it says, at that time, the voice shook the air. That's the voice of God. But now he has promised once more, I will shake not only the earth, but also the heavens. The words once more indicate the removing of what can be shaken, that is created things so that what cannot be shaken may remain. You know, I'm still here. Sabrina is still here. You know that? So sometimes the shaking comes in our lives for the best, for the good. But when my father told me 
you know, to get out the house at 18 years of age, you know, it basically, I felt rejected, you know, and um, I left home, but then I, I became a professional shoplifter. And when I mean professional shoplifter, I mean a professional shoplifter. I would go in shops and they wouldn't know I was in the shop. I would walk out with TVs, I'd walk out with Uvers, I'd walk out with a lot of things. We used to go in his shop like Boots and Debenhams and Bins, where there was perfume. We'd go in with it and we'd creep behind the counter and we'd fill a bag up full of perfume and things like that. So, and then I, be, you know, I became more addicted to drugs and I became also more violent when I was going to football matches. And I ended up, um, I, was in, I was in a nightclub and uh, I didn't used to argue with people. If they went to stick, you know, went to punch me, I would, I would just get into them. It doesn't matter how big they were. I didn't have any fear about any, any person, just, you know. I used to love fighting. And uh, this, this man, he went to punch me and I ducked out the way. And what it was at the time, I had a half pint glass, you know, with a handle and I had it in my hand. And when he went to hit me, I hit him first. And I cut his, you know, his eye was hanging out. And I ended up going to prison. You know, um, just let me, I want to share a story in Acts chapter 16. There's a story about two men called Paul and Salas. And it says about midnight, Paul and Salas. Now Paul and Salas, they were doing good. They were doing good and they were put in prison mm. for doing good. You know, sometimes when you're even doing good, your life can be shaked. Right. You know what I mean? But the, the question is, what are you stood on? What is the foundation your life is on? Is it upon the rock, Jesus? Because if it's upon Jesus, then it doesn't matter what comes against you. You'll still stand. You'll still stand. So when I look at Paul and Silas, they're out. You know that they're preaching all over. They end up getting put in prison. You know that? And you know, in the morning, they may even face death. They may even face death. And it says they were singing praises and hymns to God. I mean, is that, is that normal? Come on, is that normal? Eh? Is that normal? No, it's supernatural, you see. It's supernatural. See, God moves in the supernatural. He moves in power. You know that? And it says... What I love about this, it says, hallelujah. It says, and the other prisoners were listening to them. Suddenly, there was such a violent earthquake that the foundation of the prison was shaken. Foundation of the prison was shaken. Suddenly, suddenly, at once, all of the prison doors flew open and everyone's chains came loose. Suddenly, there was such a violent earthquake that the foundations of the prison were shaken. You see, that's God's power. God's power. You know, God's voice, when you read anywhere in the Old Testament, God spoke. His voice shook. You know, his voice shook the temple. His voice shook the heaven. His voice shook mountains. God is all powerful. He is all powerful. And I believe that when we read this story, God's power comes to shake that God will be seen. You see here, when this happened, the jailer, now can you imagine this? It's like Buckley Hall. Is it Buckley Hall? Yeah. Buckley Hall prison here. I remembered. <laughs> Buckley Hall Prison here. You know, I know strange ways because I've been in there. <laughs> Buckley Hall Prison. Can you imagine there the power of God just like this? And like an earthquake. Yeah. And all the prisoners. The, the, yeah, I picture this about 5,000 prisoners. You know that? And it says all the prison, because in, in them days, you know, they put you in, them, in a sock. You know that? And they put chains on your hands so you couldn't move anywhere. So Paul and Silas and all the prisoners, yeah, mustn't, you know that? There was, 
They couldn't move. And then all of a sudden, all, you know, all the chains came loose. The prison doors opened. That's the power of God. That is the power of God. That is the power of God. See, there may be something in your life. And I believe that tonight God wants to shake it by his power. God is all powerful. There is nothing too hard for God. You see, when I was, I was shared when I was 18 years of age, my father told me to leave the house. My mother and father got divorced shortly after that, about six months after that. And then I was on a path of destruction. You know, where, that, where I'd done many prison sentences. Many prison sentences. You know, so there's certain things in my life, you know, that have happened to me. You know, that where God has shaken my life. You know, God is in control. Do you know that? He's the beginning and the end. He's the Alpha and Omega. Yeah, he is in control of the whole earth. And everything in it. That's what his word says. Everything in it. So he's in control of your life. Whether you're a Christian or you're not, he's in control of your life. And when we know that and we can see that, then we can understand when things happen in our life. You know, the Bible says in Romans 8 verse 28, all things work together for good. For them who love God, for them who've been called by God. And I believe that, you know, that, you know, when I was 30, 35 year old, I had two children. I couldn't be a father. You know, I couldn't be, I wasn't married, you know, that, but I couldn't be any even kind of common law husband, if you want to call it that. You know, that I didn't, I didn't have any understanding. I didn't have any love. You know, that for children, for my wife, you know, that for the girl that I lived with, you know, that. And it just was a cycle that I was in. And I ended up where I was addicted to heroin and crack cocaine. You know, that. And um, I was in a mental hospital, psychiatric hospital. And when I was in that hospital, this is where God shook, shook my life again. He shook it. But he shook it for good. You know that? When we can see that his purposes and his plans are perfect, it's for good. So a woman came up to me. And obviously, you can see I'm not a bad looking lad, am I? <laughs> you know that I'm not a bad looking lad. I thought she fancied me. And she said to me, Jesus can set you free. I thought, what do I want to do with Jesus? I didn't say that, but I thought, what do I want to do with Jesus? I've never wanted anything to do with Jesus. But she said it again, Jesus can set you free. Them words hit me. Hit me. And she asked if she could take me to the chaplain. And if the chaplain could pray for me. And the chaplain prayed for me. I came out of the hospital the next day, 18 years ago. I've never been back since. Jesus, you see, Jesus shook my life. He shook my life. He shook all fear, all depression out of me. You know that? He shook drug addiction. He shook drunkenness out of me. He shook smoking out of me. He shook gambling out of me. He shook pornographic out of me. Hallelujah. 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 It changed my life completely. Where, you know, it came to a place where, you know, see, I want to share with you areas of where God's shaken my life. You know why? Because they have formed me, they formed my character. You know that? It's got me to rely upon God and trust God more. And I believe that there's things that God wants to shake here tonight. You know that, that are not helpful, that are not good for you. You know that, you know God is good. Yeah. Anything that he does, it's always good. Yeah. It's always good. So you can either allow him to shake it, or he will shake it. And he's a good shaker. <laughs> he's a very good shaker. He's a very good shaker. 
Hallelujah. So, I was living in Kenya. I was married in Kenya in um, January the 20th, 2007. And um, in the April of 2007, I was robbed at gunpoint in the house. In the house, gunpoint. And I was, my hands were tied, my feet were tied, and I was down. Not just that, my wife, my sister-in-law, I had a visiting pastor and his wife, and their children, we had, it was about 10 of us in the house, you know that. So, you know that, I thought, mm, I've only been married four months, Lord, and you know my name is Joe, you know, second name is Joseph, Joseph means multiplied, so I've not even multiplied yet, Lord. <laughs> what are you doing here, you know? But you know what? God was in control. When any shake and he does, he's in control. He's in control. He's in control. You see, many people, when something, when I share that with people, they think, well, why'd you go there? You still keep going there. Because I doesn't have any fear about what happened to me then that. You know that? It, it ended all fear in my life, fear of man. See, the Bible says fear of man is a snare. It's a snare. I don't fear man. The only person I fear is God. That day, fear of man, it was shaken out of me. But you know, from that day, from that day, which is 12 years ago, I've had the privilege to lead over 20,000 people to Jesus in Kenya. Amen. Through that. Because it shapes you, you see. Things that shape you, shape you. Shape you, shape your character. Form you who you are. That when we do face, you know, difficulties, we may face life, illnesses, terminal Ill illnesses. We may face, you know, situations where there's no way out. When I was in that mental hospital, I want you to believe me, there was no way out. In my mind, I was, I was like, Lord, I'll never get out of this. I was saying to myself, I'll never get free from this. I'll never come out of this. They said I had a personality disorder. You know that. Or I want to say to you, when I received them words, Jesus can set me free, it shook me. Shook me. Shook all unbelief in me, all doubt, all depression. And you know, as shortly after we were robbed at the, in the house, that was in the, in, the, in the April, in the August, and I'm still, you know, only young being married, I'm still enjoying my, my honeymoon, my honeymoon period. Then my wife falls pregnant. And I actually bring her back home here for a holiday to meet my family. And when we were home, we had four days to go back and we got a phone call that my mum had a heart attack on holiday in Turkey and she died. So my, my life was shook again. Because my mother, she was like Jesus. If I could say anyone was Jesus, I would say it was my mother. Because she, she forgave. She loved all the time. You know that? You know that? But on the day my mother died was on the day that we found out my wife was pregnant. And then on the day of a funeral, which hadn't, you know, you know, because it, there was some complication trying to get a body back home, it took three weeks. So we had to stay next to three weeks in England. And on the day of a funeral, my wife was taken to hospital because she was late. Then on the Monday, we travelled back to Kenya. On the Wednesday, she was taken in to hospital where she had a ruptured ectopic pregnancy. She nearly died. You know? So why am I sharing this with you? Because God's good. God is good. They told me that my wife would never have any children. The doctor said to me, you might have to have that, what do they call it, where you put in the tube and all that thing. I said, no, I, I said, my, I will be able to produce. You'll see, within three months, my wife was pregnant with my first daughter. 
You see, God brings situations, circumstances around to reveal his power. He's all powerful. He's all powerful. You see here, when the power of God hit this prison, I believe that all the prisoners, every prisoner, when you encounter the power of God, yeah, your life can never be the same again. Your life can never be the same again. So I believe that all the prisoners got saved. And then, you know, we, we look at the jail, you know, we look at the prison officer. I mean, I've never, you know, when I read this story, I, I think of the times I was in prison. A prison officer would never call me sir. I've never heard a prison officer say anything politely to me. You know that? But you see, when you hear the, you hear this, read this story and the power of God hits the place, it doesn't, it just, it doesn't just affect Paul and Salas and the prisoners. It also affects the prison officer. The prison officer says, Sir, what must I do to be saved? And he called for light. He called for a light. And then it says that he actually, because Paul and Salas had been beat up, they had all bruises and, you know, where the, you know that? And it says that they actually, that the prison officer washed, you know, cleansed them and all that, and cleaned them up and all that, and fed him. You know that? And I believe, you see, why did he do that? Because the power of God, the power of God comes to transform people's lives. Comes to transform people's lives. I can imagine that prison officer's wife you see, I can imagine this saying, you calling him sir. You've never even called me love. You know, you know what I mean? Because he was that kind of man. You know that? But you see, when the power of God touches your life, it changes you. It transforms you. Hallelujah. And I believe that tonight there are people here. You know that? That God wants to touch tonight. You know that? I believe that there are people here tonight that God wants to touch you. God wants to save you. God wants to heal you. God wants to deliver you. You know, I love this story because the whole household gets saved. The whole household. So you see, the power of God touched the prison, the prisoners, because the prison was, you know, we needed a repair job after that. It touched the prison. Touch the prisoners, touch the prison officer, and touch the prison officer's family. Hallelujah. You know what that says to me? Everyone here tonight, the power of God is going to touch you tonight. The power of God is going to touch you tonight. The power of God is going to touch you tonight. Hallelujah. 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 You know, I just want to end with this. You know, I said, yeah, I have three beautiful children. Well, when, we, when, we, when my wife was pregnant with my third child, who was Joshua, um, you know, two months before she actually gave birth, I had a dream. And in that dream, that dream shook my life, shook me. And in the dream, and it was, it was a vision in the dream, and I was in the hospital and, you know, my wife had to have a cesarean. And when she had the cesarean, she was actually, she actually bled to death. She died. You know that? She died. And this is the dream, the vision that I had in a dream two months before. So you can imagine me going to sit to say to my wife, oh, I've seen you last night. Yeah. I had to keep all of it. I had to pray. You know that? I had to pray. You know that? You know, many women die through pregnancy. You know that? Through society. Many women, especially in Africa and Asia, where they don't have the kind of treatment that they can have here. Many, millions of, you know, of women all around the world, they die because of that. And what happened was, well, my wife, she was 40, 40, 40 weeks and five days. 
and um, and a ward is broken. We went into hospital, and it was on a Thursday. And um, when we went in, you know, uh, I want to share with you. You see, when I had that dream, that dream was to to say to me, really, God was saying to me, what you're going to do about this dream? You see, death and life are in the power of your tongue, what you speak. So I said, Lord, that's, I don't have that. My wife's not going to die. You know that? I bind it. You know that? I prayed against it myself. You know that? And I, and, you know, and I said, Lord, you bring the right surgeon who can do this. And what happened was, on the Thursday, she was supposed to go in. In, you know, in a ward is bro. She was supposed to go in. She was in the hospital, in the waiting room. And then there was emergency, another woman who had a cesarean, but this woman died. This woman died. This woman died. But you know, on that day, it was like the next day my wife went in. And she, exactly the same way I saw it in the dream was that, you know, she started to lose a lot of blood. I looked on the floor, it was all the game. And then my wife was passing away. And they asked me to leave. Exactly the same way that I saw it in the dream. So you know what I'm trying to say to you? If we don't really have our trust in God, and we're not on the foundation, on the rock of Jesus, then we would crumble, wouldn't we? Huh? We can imagine that, you know that? But you see, I don't put my trust, I put my trust in God. Because he's the one who saved me. You know that? He's the one who saved me. And he's the one I trust. And he's the beginning and the end. You know that? And you know what happened? On the day that my wife went in, which on the day before when she was supposed to go in, she didn't go in. On the day she went in, they had the main consultant for women who, who bleed to death. You know that? And he was the one who actually... So I was asked to go, and he brought her around, and she lived. You know that she lived. She lived. But you know, God told me. He said, "You know why I brought that?" He said, "It's a sign to you. That's why I told you to call your son Joshua, because Joshua means God saves." And he said, "Your son is a sign to the end time." of salvation Amen. in the nations wow. of the world. Wow. Hallelujah. Can we stand please? Can we stand? Hallelujah. So what I want to share with you tonight, I want to ask you a question, as I just asked the band to come up please. I just want to ask you a question. What does God want to shake in your life tonight? Yeah. What does God want to shake in your life? Are you going to allow him to shake? Because that's what he wants to do. You know that? His power wants to touch your life. He's all powerful. Amen? Amen. Hallelujah. Can you give us a smile? Amen. Praise the Lord. Because anything that God does is good. It's all good. It's all good. You know that? You see, when people want to see... When I go on the streets, I don't want them to see me because I'm shaking, I'm dead. I want them to see Jesus. And you see, when everything of myself about me is shaken, then Jesus can be seen in me. Amen? Amen. So as we sing this song, I thought you were going to stick with me. I was just going to do a little I'll shuffle there. Eh? I thought I was getting back into the old days. Eh? Um, as we sing this song, I just want us to enter into God's presence because His power is here. And His power is going to increase. The power of God is going to increase. You know that? And if you need healing, you know that? Whatever you are going through, whatever struggle it is, God knows. God wants to shake it off you tonight. God wants to shake it off you tonight. God wants to shake it off you tonight. So can we just...